so uh, we have so far seen uh, panel data regression with uh, fixed effects that is entity fixed effects uh, in those in that kind of fixed effects basically what we are trying to do is trying to see those aspects of a particular entity uh, that do not vary over time so we say that these uh, aspects but these aspects while they do not vary over time they may still be causal effects for the dependent variable so then we include some kind of either a proxy variable uh, a dummy variable for the entity or we do entity demand uh, panel data analysis with a fixed effects and then we do the uh, we find the results now another kind of fixed effects may be time fixed effects so now we are going to talk about regression with time fixed effects so what are these fixed effects these are variables that might vary over time but not across states so notice how this is different from entity fixed effects entity fixed effects vary across entities but remains constant over time time fixed effects remains constant across entities but varies over time okay so what might some of these variables be so for instance if you have uh, safer cars or if technology changes so when technology change occurs it will uh, the technology of one time period may be more advanced than the technology of a previous time period but at a given time period the all the entities or all the states have access to the same technology so at a given time period all states it the technology is fixed across entities but as you move from one time period to the next the technology will change but this will change for all the entities so what could be some of the technologies for instance cars may become safer uh, previously there would not be airbags uh, in uh, cars now uh, as you uh, you know as the technology for airbags is developed uh, you may have airbags in all cars across all entities you may also have uh, skid proof uh, may anti lock brakes you may have things like uh, you know at there was a time when even seat belts were not available so when the seat belts became available in all cars that is a change in technology now there might be changes in national laws also so while the seat belts are available uh, it may it has become illegal to drive without wearing your seat belts so these laws when are because they are national laws they are the same across states but all states when the laws are uh, when the laws are implemented in all the states then everyone has to wear seat belts so these are factors that vary over time but remain constant at a given point of time across entities so if you think of in terms of what we did with the entity fixed effects such time fixed effects would produce intercepts that change over time so remember that we are now talking of two dimensions one dimension is a cross sectional dimension that is across entities and another dimension is a time dimension which is for each entity across time okay so these will produce intercepts that change over time so now suppose we indicate we include another variable called st that denotes the combined effect of all variables which change over time but does not change across entities okay does not change across states here the states means uh, the states united uh, the states within the united states of america okay so the resultant population regression model is now written as yit is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xit plus beta 2 zi plus beta 3 st okay so basically what we are saying is previously we had yit is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x i t notice that both y and uh, is varying over i and t and x is also varying the independent variables are also varying over i and t then you have the entity fixed effects which is beta 2 z i this is varying across entities but remaining the same for the same entity over time uh, plus beta 3 s t these are varying across 
times but are remaining the same across all entities at a given point of time. So uit. So this is varying across entities. Entity fixed effect. And this is varying across times. So you have time fixed effect. Okay. <clears throat> so when if you have only time fixed effects, then you do not have this particular uh, video, uh, this particular term in there. So you have beta 0 plus beta 1 x i t plus beta 3 s t. It is still kept as beta 3 because we are indicating that beta 2 z i there are no entity fixed effects plus u i t. So suppose you were to take uh, this model you could also write it as uh, just like you know if uh, like we had uh, substituted for the ith entity we had substituted each different entities here for the tth time we are substituting each different years okay so yi 1982 is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xi 1982 plus beta 3 s 1982 plus ui 1982 now the point is if you were not comparing uh, two different time periods then this would be similar to the familiar cross-sectional data. Cross-sectional data basically at a given point of time uh, you look at all the entities across the cross-section at that given point of time. In this case that given point of time is the year 1982. Okay, but here because we will be taking different years, we are saying we we are recognizing that uh, this equation is only for the year 1982, and further equations will come in due course. Okay, so uh, now you have beta zero. So in this particular equation, you will notice that beta zero plus beta three s 1982. These two are the constants in this uh, equation. Okay, beta 0 plus beta 3 s 1982. These are constant. What is the only thing that is varying over here? I. Okay, x i is varying, y i is varying, the year is remaining constant. Beta 0 plus beta 3 s 1982 is the constant value plus beta 1 x i 1982 plus u i 1982. In this intercept, there is a common intercept which is beta 0 and this part of the intercept is relevant only to the year 1982. Okay, so now you call the, because this is relevant, this whole thing is relevant to 1982, you call this a different uh, parameter. So you call it lambda 1982 plus beta 1 xi 1982 plus ui 1982, where lambda 1982 is beta 0 plus beta 3 1982. Similarly, if you were to uh, substitute other years for the tth uh, time period, you would have yi 1983, that is lambda 1983 plus beta 1 xi 1983. What was the equivalent in the case of entity fixed effect? We had alpha California, alpha Texas, alpha Massachusetts. Here you are having lambda 1982, lambda 1983, lambda 1984. So in that case you are allowing the intercept to be different in the entity fixed uh, effects case you are allowing the intercept to be different for different entities. Here, here you are allowing the intercept to be different for different time periods. Okay. So how can you formulate the regression with time fixed effects? Similar to the entity fixed effects, in entity fixed effects you did n minus 1 binary regressors. In the time fixed effect you can have t minus 1 binary regressors. So you could include t minus 1 dummy variables to indicate. So there would be a dummy variable for year 1982, there would be a dummy variable. So even over here you drop one of the years because you know if you include all the years you will run into dummy variable trap. So you start suppose you have data from 1982 
uh, or uh, nine I don't know what the data is from 1982 to 1988 you drop 1982 and you have uh, the first dummy variable is related to it takes a value of 1 when the year is 1982 and it takes a value of 0 when the year is 19 um, in any other year it is it takes a value of 1 when the year is 1983 and it takes a value of 0 for any other year so you could either formulate it like this or you could formulate it saying that the uh, there is a lambda t the lambda t varies that is this is the time effects formulation so if you do like this uh, time, as, how do you estimate it so if if you remember we had done um, i don't seem to have those pages here okay i will just write it again So you have entity over here, you have time over here, you have y i t over here, you have x i t over here and now you are creating a dummy variable, dummy variable nine t equals to 1983 so suppose you have california uh, 1982 arizona 1982 and so on and then you have california 1983 arizona 1983 in this particular case this dummy variable will take a value of one over here and it will take a value of 0 for all the other years. Similarly, you create a dummy variable for t equals to 1984 and that will take values of 1 and 0 similarly. Okay, so you create these binary variables and uh, b2 takes a binary variable 1 if t equals to year number 2, 0 otherwise. You regress y. So now you regress y on x i t and you include all of these dummy variables or you could do it in the just like we did the entity d mean to ls regression you could do the year d mean to ls regression and that will be very similar to how we did the entity d mean to ls regression. So we uh, try to understand how the year d mean to ls regression works it is very similar to the entity d mean to ls regression. In the case of entity demand OLS regression, we did an average value of y and x for each entity over a period of time and then we subtracted each year's value of y and x. Uh, from that we subtracted the averaged over time. So the value, averaged value over time we subtracted from each individual value of yit and xit. Here we do something else. What we do is we take averages across entities. So in that case we had done yt, uh, uh, yt average is equal to 1 by t summation of yit t equals to 1 to capital T and x i x t average is equal to 1 by t summation of x i t t equals to 1 to capital T. Here what we are doing is in time fixed effects we are doing we are taking the average across entities. So y i average is equal to 1 by n because there are n entities n equals to 1 to capital N y i t so now you are summing across all entities at a given period of time and you are dividing by the so it's like the normal cross-sectional average that you take of any variable then also x i average is equal to 1 by n 
summation of n equals to 1 to capital N x i t. Now you have these uh, summed uh, average uh, averaged value across entities at a given point of time. So you take y i t minus this averaged value across uh, a given point of time and this becomes y tilde i t and similarly you have x tilde i t and this is time demand. We had an entity demand, we have time demand. Okay, so at a given point of time, how much does an individual entity vary from the average at that given point of time? And similarly, here you have xit minus xi average. This is the time demand y variable, and this is the time demand x variable. Okay, so when you do the year demand OLS regression, you deviate yit, xit from year averages, not state averages. You estimate by OLS using year demand data. So when you want to in estimate, suppose you have reason to believe that there might be both entity and time fixed effects, then you specify your model. Your model specification is like this, yit is equal to beta 1 xit, y varies for the ith entity over for the tth time, x varies for the ith entity for the tth time, plus alpha i that is a part of the intercept which is uh, which is an indicator of a given entity but remains constant over time plus lambda t which is an indicator for a given time period but stays uh, constant across entities in that time pre period plus uit. So when t equals to 2 you compute the first difference. First difference means you take the f uh, second period minus the first period and you include an intercept this gives exactly the same regression as including entity and time fixed effects. When t is greater than 2, you can either use uh, entity demeaning t minus 1 time indicators, time demeaning n minus 1 entity t indicators, or t minus 1 time indicators and n, n minus 1 entity indicators. In all three of these cases, you are including dummy variables. Here you are including t minus 1 dummy variables. Here you are including n minus 1 dummy variables for each entity. When you have too many entities and too many time periods, then you can do entity and time demeaning. Uh, you can uh, create new variables which are entity and time demeaning and you can regress on the base to, basis of that. So this is how they have done it in uh, for this particular example and they have beer tax. They have created dummy variables for y83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. You will notice that they have left out y82 which is the reference category. So each of these coefficients is the coefficient with respect to y82. That is the fatality rate in y83 the intercept is 0 0.08 less than what it was in y82 here it is 0 0.07 what it was less than less than what it was in y82 and so on and so forth. Now if you want to test uh, whether there indeed were some time effects that is did were there some effects which varied over time was there some technology which made cars safer were there laws that were implemented over time as a result of which fatality rates in all the states went down they might have gone down by different extents but basically all of them went down so if you want to te do this uh, test uh, whether you know overall there were any time effects then you can you test the hypothesis that y83 uh, the null hypothesis is that all of these coefficients are zero okay that is the status quo now uh, the alternate hypothesis is that at least one of this is not equal to zero the way you do this test is by doing a joint uh, hypothesis test and the way you you estimate the f uh, statistic you uh, calculate the f statistic for that and you find here that the f statistics is 4.22 and uh, 
the probability that it would be so high is quite small it is uh, statistically significant at uh, for uh, six years uh, for six categories and for uh, it does uh, it is statistically significant at 99 percent uh, confidence level now we in now we will briefly talk about another effect which is called the random effect so when the when we were talking of fixed effect we said that each entity had a certain had certain other characteristics which were definite characteristics of those uh, particular entities that affected the fatality rates in each of those states okay so these are these are variables that cannot be overlooked and hence we include the uh, uh, dummy variable of other state or we use the fixed effect formulation but suppose instead in that particular case you have taken all of the states that are the, that is the entire population all the states in the united states but suppose you are looking at doing a different kind of analysis where you randomly choose 1000 individuals or you randomly choose 1000 households that you follow over time now because you have chosen them randomly whatever other characteristics there were about those particular individuals or uh, those particular households because they are completely randomly chosen those they there are all the other aspects that could affect the fatality rate it does not have as uh, effect because it is not correlated you know because they are uh, randomly chosen hence uh, they are independently and identically distributed there are no other aspects about those particular individuals which could there are no omitted variable bias because they are randomly chosen that if you have that kind of a situation where your uh, entities that you have chosen are randomly chosen then there might be still a random effect so what is happening is in this in the fixed effect you are assuming that y i t is equal to beta 0 or alpha i plus beta 1 x i t and this alpha i is the fixed component with which is fixed with the fixed component for entity i right plus u i t but suppose you have they are randomly chosen then you don't know that there are no other fixed components so you have a constant component plus u i t plus some random error which is associated with the i th component so if this happens this may happen you know that you are there is some random associate but it does not affect there is no omitted variable bias because of that so that kind of a model is called a random effect model and in order to understand so this is what we are saying when the entities are chosen at random the effect of not including the entity would not be correlated with the dependent variable because they are chosen at random okay and like the fixed effects model random effects model has treatment effects tau i which are random variables so you know, how do you find out whether there is a random effect whether you should use the random effect formulation or the fixed effect formulation you use the houseman test okay so the houseman's uh, test uh, has the null hypothesis that uh, uh, you know there are in fact um, the the effects are in fact uh, random so if you have an insignificant p value or if your p value so the null the null hypothesis is that your effects are your uh, all the effects that are associated with the entities are random so if you get an insignificant p value then you use random effects if you get a significant p value that means you reject your null hypothesis that the model has random effects and you use fixed effects so uh, next we have the assumptions and standard errors for fixed effects regression um, 
this is a little uh, uh, complicated because you know over here we have to introduce the concept of clustered standard error uh, standard error we will uh, skip this section for the time being but uh, basically we will just talk about the fact that the uh, least square assumptions for panel data follows these four assumptions one is that the expected value of error given all the uh, given that you have included all the different variables uh, xi1 up to xit and given that there and, and any fixed effects uh, the expected value of error so whatever error you have left is uncorrelated with y and so expected value of error is 0. Another thing is x1t xit or iid draws from their joint distribution ok xit and uit have finite fourth moments that is there are no uh, no big outliers and there is no perfect multicollinearity between multiple x's we will not discuss these assumptions in great detail because it is uh, difficult to do it one of the problems is of course that there may be some level of autocorrelation so autocorrelation happens when you measure the same entity over time okay so uh, when you measure the same entity over time uh, the value of the entity in time t plus 1 or t plus j will probably be correlated with its earlier value so if so correlation of z t and z t plus j will not be equal to 0 so that means it is correlated with itself and that is what is known as autocorrelation autocorrelation means correlation with itself so uh, covariance of z t and z t plus j is called the j th autocovariance so uh, there will be there might be some uh, autocorrelation between data but that is something that you know we cannot exactly discuss it over here but there might be some autocorrelation okay <coughs> then you use something called clustered standard errors uh, we will not be discussing this either okay finally we come to an application um, we will uh, we talk about the particular application that we have been discussing so drunk driving laws and traffic deaths uh, some facts are there are many traffic fatalities in the US some of them may be caused by uh, drunk drinking driver here they are saying one third of traffic fatalities that's a large number okay so about 40,000 traffic fatalities one third of it if it is due to drinking driver that is a big problem and uh, they have found that uh, people who are out late at night or early morning 25% uh, of drivers have been drinking and a drunk driver is 13 times as likely to cause a fatal crash so these are all the reasons why this particular problem has been looked at uh, what are the public policy issues drunk driving causes massive externalities externalities are things that happen when you know you do something and it affects someone else so pollution is an externality so what is the externality of drunk driving sober drivers are killed uh, you know they did nothing to deserve it they just someone else was drunk and they got killed so this is an externality for the society society bears medical costs you know so, so on and so forth so there are big uh, dr uh, problems so what are some of the policies what are the laws there might be a mandatory punishment there may be a min minimum legal drinking age as we have said before and there could be economic interventions so this is this you can look at later on the bill was uh, introduced in the in honor of a 13 year old girl called melanie um, powell melanie powell who died okay so this is the bill for that you can read it at leisure so we look at the panel data set this is the this these are the variables in the panel data set traffic fatality rate tax on a case of beer minimum legal drinking age minimum sentencing laws so they have included all the other 
policy variables that are such as sentencing laws should there be was there a mandatory jail time was there mandatory community service or was there only a monetary fine um, the number of vehicle miles per driver so uh, if you have certain states where the drivers are more experienced it is possibly true that they will cause fewer accidents and uh, also uh, uh, data about the economic data about the state such as real per capita income etc so uh, potential there might be potential omitted variable bias from variables that vary across states but are constant over time such as culture of drinking and driving quality of roads this we have already discussed there may be potential ov uh, omitted variable bias from variables that vary over time but are constant across states such as improvements in auto safety and cultural national attitudes towards drunk driving if everyone gets more aware that you know drinking and driving is not a good thing then we used time fixed effects so these are some of the models that have been built uh, model 1 to model 7 in model 1 you include only beer tax and as you will see here they have not included state fixed effects or time fixed effects and there are no clustered standard errors in model 2 they have included beer tax and state fixed effects but no time fixed effects here they have included both state fixed effects and in all of these models 3 to 7 they have included both state fixed effects and time fixed effects from model 3 to 6 they have included all the years data 82 to 88 in model 7 they have included only two years data that is 82 and 88 this is the changes specification they can you can do it through the changes specification if you look at the um, adjusted r squares you will notice that the adjusted R square for the first model where you do not include panel data, uh, state fixed effect or time fixed effect, it is very, very low. This indicates that possibly it is important to include both state fixed effects and time fixed effects. But the minute you include state fixed effects, the R adjusted R square jumps to 0.889. And after that, there is a little bit of improvement, but not that much of improvement. So there are huge amounts of state fixed effects. There are some time fixed effects. So this is the fourth model. Let us look at what they are including in the fourth model. So here they are including beer tax. Here they are including three dummy variables. Uh, drinking age 18 instead of including a numerical variable for drinking age which is over here they are including three dummy variables uh, and these are all with relevant to the reference uh, uh, category of drinking age being 21 okay so if the drinking age is lower it happens to be that the fatality rates seem to be higher but they are not very statistically significant these variables are not statistically significant what is the most statistically significant variable unemployment rate so it has a negative coefficient so if there is high unemployment rate the fatality rates seem to be smaller so this is uh, possibly because if you have high unemployment rate then people will have less income and they may drink less so it's a sort of a strange positive effect of having low unemployment um, uh, you know so oh if unemployment rate is low that means more people are employed there are uh, oh so i'm sorry i i said the opposite thing if more people are employed there is less drinking and driving and so fatality rates are higher uh, are lower if more people are employed but if income is more then fatality rates are more so employment leads to uh, lower fatality rates but income per head leads to higher fatality rates possibly because people have more money to drink or they have more money to drive cars and so on and so forth okay so these these questions have to be discussed so these are the main results sign of the beer tax coefficient changes when fixed state effects are included as you can see the sign changes from 0.36 to minus 0.66 so huge omitted variable bias was there so you should include the state fixed effects 
Time effects are statistically significant but including them doesn't have a big impact on the estimated coefficients neither does it have a big impact on the adjusted R square. Estimated effect of beer tax drops when other laws are included. So as you can see that actually some of the other laws may actually be a, have a better effect on uh, reducing fatalities. So the only policy variable that seems to have an impact is the tax on beer, not minimum drinking age, not mandatory sentencing etc. However, beer tax is not significant even at the 10% level. Okay, So uh, which uh, once you control for state economic conditions, beer tax is not uh, significant. Um, so this is what the things are. What are the threats to internal val validity? omitted variable bias, strong functional form, these things we will talk about a little bit in uh, assessing regression models which is another lecture we will do. So, um, we will not talk about uh, this digression. So, what are the advantages and limit limitations of fixed effects regression? You can control for unobserved variables. Uh, which vary across states but not over time. If, if you have only data for 48 states, uh, you do not have a very large data set but when you have data for 48 states over 7 years, now, now you have really a big data set which solves your problem of small data. You know, you now a lot of your um, uh, OLS regression uh, problems, you know, law of large numbers and CLT, all of those things come into effect when you have a larger data set. Estimation involves relatively straightforward extensions of multiple regression. Okay, so these are the ways it can be done. I will not repeat these again. What are the limitations, challenges? Need variation in X over time within entities. So basically what we are saying is that suppose there are certain, you do not have any X variables. Here what was the X variable? The beer tax. Beer tax changed a within an entity over time and across entities at a given point of time. So there was some variation in beer tax and there was variation in the fatality rate. But suppose the beer tax just remained constant for the entities over time, then it would be subsumed within the fixed effect of a, so suppose you always have California always puts a 2.2% tax on beer. So there would be no change in uh, uh, beer tax from one year to the other. So that would be again one of the uh, variables that lead to fixed effect, uh, fixed effects in for the state. So you need excess that change over time within entities. Uh, time lag effects might be important. So lag effects means the change. How many? Uh, so you are here. We are looking at for a given period of time at that period of time, but maybe. The previous year's beer tax has an effect on this year's fatality rate, which is quite possible, right? So, uh, but we haven't looked at those time lag effects. So, here this is where we end the lecture and uh, hope you were able to understand everything about panel data.